Before we get started, please take the time to like, add, and subscribe to our pages on YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, and iTunes. Also, please leave us a review. We can wander our way over, you know, because this is wandering ways. What's Bigfoot possibility? Wink. Wink. What's up? What's up, everybody? It is another wonderful day with the Wandering Ways crew. It is myself, the Reverend Marcus, and with me, as per usual, uh, Ranger Zach. He's got things, he's got cameras, he's got pamphlets, he's probably got Matt Buddy's gift in there somewhere, but no. Oh, exciting. No. I feel like I just saw you. How you doing? Oh, I did just see you, which is good. It's good as always. Uh, we really just saw each other because we freaking were sleeping ass to ass in a Jeep for or in a van for seven days. So, yeah, no, it is good. It was good to see the Reverend. It was good to see Iceland. It was good to see everything. I'm excited. I got it all. I, I do got to apologize. I did give Matt his gift already. So I don't have those pamphlets. I just have the one that I kept for myself. <laughs> Oh, shucks. Real shucks. No, no, no. It's always good. You can give out those gifts. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, it's time. We just got back from good old Iceland. And so this, this episode, we're just going to go day by day, what we did, who we saw, what we saw, uh, pros, cons, everything in between. So just... Taking it back, because it was like, what, over a week ago now, this day? It's crazy. No, it's crazy how how it has passed um, since then. And I like that you're you're just, we're just getting right into it today, because this is going to be a long one. This is an exciting one. It's it's what's on top of the mind. It's what, what we just did, what we just did. Um, I don't know. Do you just want to roll through day by day, kind of how it went? You know, we, we, we. We, we left Portland, we got on the plane at Portland, nice di direct flight, seven hours yeah. up and down, couldn't sleep on the plane, too much excitement. Uh, and you land, you land early as fuck in the morning because <laughs> um, you're tired at this point. What was it? It was like 6 a.m., 7 a.m. We're at the airport. Yeah, we, we got in at 6 a.m. Uh, Icelandic time. Uh, and what sucked about that is... We had to wait at the airport for what two hours for the camper van place to one open and then two for our shuttle to go get the camper van show up. So I mean we were just hung out. No, and that and that was interesting in itself because you're sitting there, you see every little tour group come in to get there, you know, sign up, go here, go there. And just watch everybody who's also in the same days and confusion as you as they get out of that customs and then into the world they're like uh where do we go where do we go what do we do but it was nice uh we were able to exchange our money uh right when we landed there at the airport which was nice and and got that uh exchange to get some of the local money to use while we're where we're shopping around iceland um i also liked the fact that like you it, it was simple like they had what you needed. They had like a little supermarket that was 24 seven uh, for people who are just getting off the planes um, right there. Right. When you exit out, um, which was nice. Cause I, I was like, Oh, I wanted a water. I wanted, you know, an apple. Cause I, I, I didn't, was not feeling well a couple days leading up to the trip. And Oh, it, it, I kind of scared you. <laughs> I know that right away. So um, no, it was all good. And then we powered through. And it, it turned out amazing. And we just waited and we got the camper van. And I, what was, what was your first thought when, when you actually got the keys? Cause you're the one that drove the most, you know, you got the keys to the camper van. What was that like? Oh, the moment I got the keys, that's when, and I anticipated this going in, but that's when it like, I knew it was going to hit me that it was truly real that we're now in Iceland and now we're starting this puppy off. So it's like, we got the keys, camper vans loaded. Let's figure out how to freaking navigate Iceland and go see some cool shit. Right. No, it was just kind of like, what do we do? You know, we went to that supermarket, we went in there and I was just like blown away of 
like the differences right away mm -hmm. just right away i mean it's not too different you know it's the same shit just with different labels different boxes or you know it's like it's still a saltine cracker just might not taste the exact same or look the exact same even or whatever that may be whatever food it may be um I mean, it's yeah. Mount. It's still Mountain Dew, even though in the states it's MTN, and over there they spell out Mountain. Yeah, no, exactly. But it's also the Citrus Blast Mountain Dew over there. Doesn't, I don't know what the difference is. Um, I wish I would have brought more. I was worried about that because, like, you, there was like Declare Foods, the agricultural items. You know, was always kind of an issue with traveling internationally. So I was just like, I didn't want to really like bring any of it over because it would be like, oh, uh, maybe it gets taken away. Um, I kind of wish I did because like looking back at the trip and I'm glad your super eight captures some of the moments. I didn't take a video or picture of inside the van. Oh, <laughs> you know, so like there's little things like that, that it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm more focused on capturing different photos or videos for just those reasons that it's like when you're telling the stories to people, it's like, no, I want to show you what this camp stove looked like, or no, I want to show you what like this, you know, so you're looking at like the villages, like here's the houses, here's the kids, here's the, you know, so definitely one of those things going back is like, I wish I would have captured more of that. I mean, I captured, I looked at my camera here, 2000 images. <laughs> so yeah. that is a lot of pictures for the whole yeah. thing. 2000. <laughs> yeah. Damn. I mean, 500 of them are puffins. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but probably a pretty good amount. No, exactly. No, exactly. No, but it was, it's one of those things because it's like you're telling the stories to everybody like, oh yeah. So like the tunnel, I'm glad I have that video, that one minute long video of us driving through the tunnel because it's like, what the hell, man? Yeah. Yeah. The tunnels, the tunnels were something else. I was just telling people today about the tunnels that... Uh, you know they they're one first thing they're long yeah they're like they're crazy eight. long i think the shortest one we had was three kilometers long yeah and then uh the longest was what seven i didn't know it was eight because it had the eight. one and the seven as like i was like holy crap this was like eight long i think there was one that was even 12 i don't think we went through it but i think there's one around there that's 12 i saw oh yeah it could be i believe it but then the other crazy thing is how many one lanes, and I mean one lanes, both like for both directions. You know, you see a car come and you get off in the little pull out area. I'll have to post that. I'll I'll have to send it to you. I'll, I'm going to upload all the when I get back to Montana. I'm in Oregon right now still. When I get back, I'm going to have to upload all these to a folder for you, just so you can post on the wandering ways for everybody to show them this tunnel, because oh. like. You're driving singly. There's a car head on. You're going to head on collision. Oh, they have a little pullout. And it's like, we're going the one way, which kind of makes sense because you drive on the right side of the road, same side of the road. So it's like it, the pullouts are on their right side. So it makes sense that they were probably given a sign like you pull out. But like, again, pay attention to the road signs. Yeah, really important to pay attention to road signs. So that way, you know, uh, if anything comes up or anything important uh don't get too distracted looking he's still waiting. Cool he's, stuff. That, that means he's still waiting to see if he's got a speeding ticket yeah yeah i it'll be 50 50 i may have a speed ticket speeding ticket coming my way because i may have got in one of those tunnels posed for going a little fast and it's because i was distracted at the wowingness of a tunnel that long <laughs> and that narrow right i think you're you're probably speeding up because you're scared like i want to get out of this thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like they're cool and but it was cool because they pop out right into those valleys um but we got to experience a little bit of Reykjavik when we when we first got in so we kind of got the rental car got our food went into town and you were able to try fermented shark we were able to check out the market um, yeah yeah what was your I mean that was really, the market cool. was cool I think you know it's kind of a classic thrift market i mean you've seen one you've seen them all but um you know there's little nuances or little things that are different depending on where you are whether it's in the states you know you're gonna have slight differences from pacific northwest to the southwest to the southeast to northeast to the midwest all that in there 
So we got to see those differences for Iceland, like a lot of wool sweaters. Yeah. Um, you know, that's that's where I tried the fermented shark, uh, which going to tell everybody right now, it's bad. <laughs> it's it was not a good it was not a good taste it was weird texture it felt like it was chewing really crappy rubber um yeah. so i uh, was you know do not recommend it but you should try it i just don't recommend it <laughs> that's fair that's fair and they even had horse tenderloin i saw at the market which is kind of cool i mean like like you said like you see you see one you've seen them all like they have the cheap goods but then they had like the European, like, oh, he's selling the yard signs or the stuff that like you do see at a thrift market, no matter where you're at, it's just like, local to that yeah. area, <laughs> which is cool. And then to get out, walk, kind of walk the town, see the touristy spots. But I kind of understand now looking back that like they do cater to the tourists there in a way. They really do appreciate it. I think that's a big part of their economy. Um and it's it's neat, like it's cool to to walk around. They're very friendly people in those towns. Uh, walking the Rainbow Road up to the big church, uh, I think that's just like one of those things you got to do when you're Reykjavik. If, and I hope I'm still pronouncing it right. I don't even know. Like that's how that's how much they catered to us Americans. That like you did, you, I got by in my own ignorance, and I and and that's not. I don't think that's okay. I, I should have got slapped a few more times. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. I do know what you mean. I mean, they do really cater to um, the the tourists from all countries, you know. So that was the one thing I really noticed being over there is, you know, how how much English is spoken. And so it felt very much like if I was visiting Canada, almost, where it's just yeah, like English is. And, you know, I forget that like those northern countries in Europe, English is spoken a lot. Like even in Germany, English is spoken a lot. And so you can find it. I just took it off. I guess it's more surprised me that I wasn't as lost with the language barrier as I thought. Right. And that and, and that's why I kind of recommend this is a good starter country to travel to. Um if you're if you're really wanting to to experience kind of that, you're worried about European travel or worried about something, it's a good kind of jump start. And it was just I don't know, yeah, it was cool. Like because it it was also cool not to feel lost. They're not, you know, you you hear stories of people when they travel abroad, they're like they're kind of the scare stories, you know, and it's like I didn't have a moment of that at all. No. No, there was there was none of that um, in in Iceland. I mean, it's a relatively safe country to begin with, so um, it's not that like too surprising that we didn't have like those true scares or anything like that. Right. Um, I think I saw like five things of graffiti. I think I saw a little bit more than five, but um, yeah, there not a lot of graffiti. Uh, you felt like you could walk around no problem anytime of day right um, so and it was day the sun didn't set all of, yeah it was day all the time it was <laughs> darkest I ever got was when we were in those tunnels yeah oh, really though oh, you're not wrong you should have hit one of the <laughs> I know I remember sleep, getting huh? out of the tunnels going like oh Jesus bright light again that's maybe why we saw one of those vans parked in the tunnel yeah right they were trying to sleep yeah <laughs> no that was good and we got into the at that thing Valier Park right away on day one too, which I, I thought like that was I mean that's kind of cool. It's a cool park. I I was different, but it was neat in its own way. Well, I, you know, the all the parks are different, right. you know, when you compare them to the US parks right off the get-go, because they don't have the the entrances, you know. Uh, they, the, at least these ones didn't have a fee except for like the parking fee. So, right. you know, there's that, the visitor centers are different in a way. Um, you know, they had pretty much just a facility to use the washroom. They had kind of a visitor center there. It wasn't too crazy. And then they had like a real small gift shop that wasn't much. So those big differences off the get go compared to like a park in the U S 
um, you know, like a crater, a Yellowstone, a glacier, um, like even a Redwoods, you know, it's a little bit different. Right. Um, but I mean, that one, thankfully, it had the people like it was a park. Right, right. And that's what makes it interesting. And, and that one, too, I think when you do kind of talk to parks, you know, and they, they have, I think we did the three parks. Um, I feel like the back country, and I always say this when it comes to the parks, even here, is like if you could get like those four by four vehicles and get up there, some of those hikes that are uh, established in the back country, I think um, would be dope. And what's really cool is it's, it's not necessarily like a hike either. It's like just a destination point. Like it's like, oh, to the to the waterfall, to the canyon. Um, and we scratched the surface. And I mean scratch, like just barely touched it. So I could only imagine what's in that highlands country. Yeah, for sure. We barely, this, this, Iceland as a whole, we scratched, um, you know, and that Thingvellir area, for sure, definitely scratched. Um, you know, there's, I think you could spend a month there easily. Um, and probably need to if you want to see truly everything. Um, but no, Thingvellir was cool. It had the plates, so North America and Europe, uh, where the tectonic plates are. Um, so, you can continent hop, which was kind of cool. Right. No, that was neat. I mean, that's one of those things people like to do and see. Um, it was cool to see the water in, in the plates too. You know, they had the, and then you could even out in the lake, there's like, here's where you can come scuba dive in the plates. So there's a lot of opportunities um, to do that in those places. You need an LED lights for your vehicle? Look no further than our friends at Oxteo. Keeping our vehicles well lit while on the road while looking for Bigfoot. Make sure to use code RUGARU, R-U-G-A-R-U, -U, on your next set of LED lights. Hey, hey there, Reverend. Um, I heard that you might be running dry on your sticker supplier. Yeah, I've been looking around and I've kind of like run out of cool stickers to buy and put on water bottles and stuff. Well, I, I mean, have you seen the stuff Josh has been coming out with lately? No, I have not. Well, he is doing some really cool stuff with the Shop LS574. Yes, they're working with indigenous communities and making some really cool stickers. Um, he has a really cool buffalo mountain sticker. There's even water bottles, hats, sweatshirts, the whole swag. And we even got a discount code for you guys. Yes, if you use Wandering Ways at Shop LS574, you're going to be getting a discount on your next purchase. But not only that, you're going to be giving a percentage of that sale to the Little Shell Tribe, as well as they donate a dollar of every sale to murdered and missing indigenous women. So just such a cool thing going on there. You know, you use the code Wandering Ways, W-A-N-D-E-R-I-N-G, W-A-Y-S, and you put that in there, boom, you're getting a discount. The Wild West is full of dangers, from snakes to bears. The outdoorsman must be prepared. That is why when you experience rivers like the San Juan or the Yellowstone, you must bring a blue ribbon net. Handcrafted and biodegradable, these classic wooden fishing nets are all you need while on the river. Make sure to use code RUGARU10 when checking out at Blue Ribbon Nets. Again, the code is RUGARU10. R-U-G-A-R-U-1-0. Um, yeah, thinking, there there was. You know, the, other you know, and, the other problem with Thingler we had was was we were tired, so we ended up camping at from like five p.m. to nine p.m. in the park. Yeah, we we decided to find a campsite and just pass out for a while because, and I think was one of the smarter moves we did because I mean we were exhausted and we didn't want to start the the trip off exhausted. Um, because we got exhausted later. So, um, you know, fine. And then we woke up and, you know, it was like, what, nine, still bright out, all that fun stuff. And we just went off exploring more, even though most things are closed. Right. Well, and, but that's what was really unique, unique about it, too, is like 
the tourist stuff was closed for sure. Like the like that one garden we wanted to see that night, the troll garden. Um, and then just like different, like uh, the different tourist elements, I think like where you could you go take this tour or go visit this factory or town or see that. But then the like nature elements, I think was really cool. And that's really what we did prioritize was the nature elements of this trip. And we were able to get out into uh, those areas. Like you can go see a waterfall at 1 a.m. And it would just be you in that waterfall. Um, and I think that kind of understanding that as time went on throughout the trip, like the accessibility of some of this stuff too grew on us. Cause early on, I think there was some of those we were worried about because of our like American use of parks, um, mm -hmm. you know, and that, that happened in these first few days. Cause there was that one waterfall we tried to go see, we could hear it, but we were like, oh, we're rolling up on like some dude's house. It felt like. And I mean, it was early in the morning and it was just like, nah, let's not, let's not do that. But then you started to see where like some of these houses were right next to the lighthouses or were right next to these kind of features or these places, almost as if they're like caretakers of these places. Um, but it very accepting of people coming to check them out as well. Yeah. Yeah. The, the timing of going to see these places, you know, I think I really grew an appreciation for one, the remoteness, remoteness that we had early in the, the trip. And then two, also visiting a lot of these big hitters at odd times, you know, because later in the trips, we're in the more populated areas and all the waterfalls, all the all of those features from the Diamond Beach to the plain to there were large amounts of people. Right. So, uh, you know, having the the timing to go see it where it is. Yeah, sure. It's 10 in, at night or or even like six in the morning or whatnot. You know, having that opportunity to be by ourselves, like for a lot of the stuff we saw, we were like the only ones there or we had moments where we were the only ones there. And what's wild is we were able to, even in some of those packed places, like that Diamond Beach, we just kept walking further away from the people and we were able to have those moments. Um, and yeah, that one, the day I think was starting to grow at that point of the day, but I'm trying to think of the other one there was another time we I had an example uh, where we, where we kind of did that. Oh, the puffins early on, where it's like there were a lot of people at the puffin cliffs, and you could tell it's probably like all day long. There's probably one or two people there, uh, no matter what time of day, just because of where we we're at. And we were able to just keep walking along the cliffs to a part where it was just us. Yeah, uh, that was. Being able to have those moments where it was just us was a huge, huge plus for the whole trip. It really was. And it's tough to get that those kind of moments in any of the places, like whether it's in a park or not a park here in the States. You know, you really have to either get far away in or like timing's very, very crucial. Right. No, and and I mean it helps that there's not a lot of people in Iceland either. But <laughs> It was, uh, I think the only one place I think, uh, kind of early on in the trip too, is we did find that, uh, oh, well, it wasn't the, well, it wasn't the one, the natural hot springs is Hellulog, H-E-L-L-U-L-A-U-G, uh, Hellulog hot springs. Um, there were people there hot spring <laughs> at one, at like midnight when we went there. Oh yeah. Yeah. That would have been the one I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would have. Um, yeah, I forgot about that. That I mean, that was pretty late in the day, I think, too. What was... Right. Right. It was. It was like 11 p.m. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's not going to be perfect. I expected, no, I, people almost, just... I expected people almost all the time. And so to get the lack of people that we did was actually kind of a treat. No, and it was nice. And I think the people, people were more peaceful, laid back, too. 
when we're, you know, just the encountering pretty much everywhere, mm-hmm. you know, like even this, like the bad tourists weren't even that bad. No, you know, and, and I really, that I think of the one waterfall where they had the, like the bathrooms, the, lo- the big parking lot, uh, the one you walk behind. Oh uh, yeah. 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 Um, that one, like to me, it's like, I feel like that's where you'd encounter a lot of this, like bad tourists. Mm-hmm. And we really didn't, um, which was kind of neat to see as well. Yeah, that was, that's true. We didn't really run into like the bad tourist. Um, it's just people kind of doing their thing and then, you know, not doing anything too stupid. Right. Like, very aware of other people, which is kind of surprising. Yeah. And it was nice. I mean, it, maybe it's the type of tourism that it is too, you know, because like you get, you get to like, to me, it, it, there's all, there is that pureness of nature that Iceland kind of had um, with it. You yeah. Know, that reverence and respect for the land and the people on it and around it um, where, where I guess like that's what it attracts, you know, where, so our parks here in the U.S. They kind of they also attract the people who you know they they like to go to the cities and like to go do the American thing here, which is different. I mean that's what makes these places cool and unique, and why we need to go visit and see them all because you learn from them. Yeah, you really do. Um, but kind of going back into the regular review of things, um, you know, the second day. So we woke up early. We ended up finding another camp spot um, just to kind of get more sleep, Mm -hmm. um, really kind of get on their time schedule a little bit better. Um, We did. From that point on, we really were. Yeah, yeah, I I think so, too. We really were uh, back kind of on that schedule. Um, But we woke up and uh, we ended up doing this, I think, just twice, if I remember right. But. We went to like the community centers to hit up the hot tubs, kind of hot spring geothermal water, which was kind of a little kind of a best well kept secret almost. Honestly, no, I think that was one of the coolest things we did. And that's what when I was looking, when I was doing the research uh, for Hoffafos, the pool, there's a swimming pool that overlooks the water up there. And I know I'm butchering that name too. Um, but you overlook the uh the water and I was reading I was like oh they have hot springs basically as well like the hot tubs where they're channeling the hot water from the volcano as well and I'm like I bet you all these pools and community centers in these towns that all these small towns have have that and it was just like why not why you know we're living in a van we don't have a shower and these pools have like it's part of the, I don't know. I had a blast. I I enjoyed them. I, you know, the, the community centers, I really enjoyed how, um, the one, the community, each small town had that community center and then like the parks It was very much like to get people into the community and spend time from all ages, whether it was the rec center doing stuff or whether it was, you know, the small, like, local professional uh, soccer team or uh, the parks with all of the cool shit in them, you know? It was really much geared to getting people to into the community. Right, and in the way, like, the communities, like, you, that one town also on day two, we, we like, uh, it was a coastal town out on that peninsula, that Snanen, it's S-N-A-E, Fidel's, Tokol. Yeah, peninsula. it was, like, Ol- Olafasu or... Olafus or something like that. Yeah. I'm, yes. Yes. I'm not even close to be honest. But I know just the that way much. You, you walked around that town and the houses in that town, and they were just chill with it, okay with it. Um, I mean, people are obviously like, "Don't walk on my lawn and don't don't do that." But um, it wasn't bad. You know, it was it was it was very friendly and very nice. Um, and it was I think that was a good way to do that. Uh, like you said, with the, with the community centers to start, because you kind of started your morning and you got to experience the people. Cause even like, I feel like they we're not the only tourists to do that either. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it kind of, in a way they catered to it a little bit in a way. And it was a cheap way to hot springs. It was, it was. Um, 
super cheap. It was great. I loved it, um, to be honest. Um, you see people living their lives, whether it was like the family chilling in the playing in the pool or the one gal that woke up early to do laps in the pool um, mm-hmm. and then do the cold tub, all that stuff. So, um, you know, that's I think what I enjoyed about it most is being able to see Icelandic people do Icelandic people things. No, it was that was amazing to do. And then we, we even started off that day. We got to see the cliffs which I thought were cool, the Geoberg Cliffs. Yeah, those were cool. You got to see the... Uh, we went and saw the seals. The seals and that crevasse oh. that, you, that you had, the canyon. Oh, yeah, the gorge. We the gorge, ran it, uh, yes. Yeah, we uh, hiked into that. That was really cool because uh, it was like kind of up. You had to hike up a bit, and then you like hiked right into it, which was really cool. And... This all out of that peninsula, basically, all out pretty much on that peninsula. We got real close to the seals. I liked when you brought, you know, the and all the lighthouses. I, you know, I I really had lighthouses like highlighted on my things to see because they had some really cute and pu- beautiful lighthouses. Uh, and you'll definitely see pictures of that as we post them. But I just kind of how even these places were tucked in with those lighthouses. You know, some of these highlight spots are like here you go, here's what you see, here's what you check out. Um, I don't know. I, I was about it. And then the art too, that you would come across in these towns and these villages and these places that like very artsy people. Very artsy people and artsy and random, you know, there was so much just random things you would find, whether it was the red chair, that's just kind of there. Um, well, but there was like the one stumps that were like rainbow, uh, the rainbow colored like rocks or yeah. randomness just out in the middle of the mountains. Uh, the weird like sphere things that we saw on the like very last day as we're driving around, like the statues that just had the ball. Like, yeah, that was weird. The one what? plane wing that was just kind of was, was there as well. Um, the... So, the random ass statues you just come across everywhere. So the randomness was kind of fun too. Yeah, the the Petra's Rock Garden, the egg, the town with all the eggs on the <laughs> the ball, like kind of like the balls, but they're eggs. Um, even that one, that really cute town we went to, it had like the take a seat in every language. Yeah, like, that's right. You had like it was everywhere, uh, and it was it was cool. I mean, I guess when it, you know we're talking daylight in the summer, in the winter you get the opposite, right? It's darkness, so. A lot of time indoors to to work on those stuff and do your hobbies and really do your art. I think it's really cool. I do too. I do too. Um, that peninsula that we spent the second day, yep. Overall, was really really cool. Um, because it kind of had a little bit of everything. And you're on the coast. You had the black sand beach, uh, which was more rock. Um, than on anything. that one, yeah. On that, yeah, on that one later, there really was black sand, which was kind of crazy to see. And I knew it blew your mind. Yeah, because everyone I've ever seen, like they claim it's a a black beach, black sand beach, is very much like that first one where it's just a lot of rock. And so it's like, okay, I see why you say it's a black sand beach, but it's not really a black sand beach. Whereas the one at, uh, what is it, the Vasterhorn? Uh, that one, that one was a black sand beach. It was beautiful too. Yeah, it was just like wow, so fine and oh, I, I that yeah, no, it was cool and and even just like I'm trying to think, we saw, the waterfalls out on that peninsula were great. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got into that town. Uh, we actually that was the first town we actually camped. Kind of like we actually sat down. Like let's get here at eight. We were there. We paid the fee to Patrick. Shout out to Patrick. He gave us a oh, discount yeah. even. Uh, hopefully, and then we gave him a sticker. So hopefully, hopefully, found wandering ways. Hopefully, we're 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 live in Iceland. Uh, but we want to give Patrick a shout out because that was just awesome. He hooked us up with a, a deal on the campground. Um, yeah, and we stayed there. We tried to jump on the trampoline in that town, but the kids were jumping on it. And then when we went back in the morning, because we're like, let's try again in the morning, the air they had it blown down. Yeah, they had the air off. 
uh, that day was also the day we got our first real off-road gravel road um, where we went out to the two orange uh, lighthouses. Um, <clears throat> which, I mean, you know, it, that was one of the two roads I was really worried about going in to the trip. Um, and the the van did pretty well. I'm super uh, thankful we got the gravel insurance, but, you know, it was able to hit the rope bumps and like, you know, you can fly on those gravel roads. Well, and you were able to, yeah, recommend the gravel insurance 100%. Um, that was a nasty road. We also saw the Arctic Fox on that road. Yeah, that's right. That was uh, that was that day. And it just ran right across the road. Yeah, right across the road on us. And then he was booking it. Because I, I ran up on the hill and tried to get some photos. And, man, he was booking it. Yeah. Um, cool orange lighthouses, though, in that spot. Uh, I got to get you your photo, your your album cover pictures here, too. Uh, oh, yeah, I, yeah. That's a, actually a really cool photo. You know, they turned out well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was it that was really cool. Uh, we also saw the owl. I don't know if that was that morning, or no, it was the day before. We even saw. Yeah, that I forgot. Yeah, the owl. We did. That's the one thing. It was one of the coolest things we saw, and it's one of the more because it was just a blip. I think we were so tired too because we we're just like, yeah. "What is that? That's an owl." You know. Yeah. Um, Flew crazy. really slow and just like it, like looked at us in the air, and then it just poof, there it went. That was it, wild. Uh, and then you even had the uh, the the zip line we found. When you talk about the randomness over here on the peninsula, oh yes, that was you, that day. Yeah, you did the zip line. They had this random zip line out on the peninsula. Not just the zip line; they had the whole like weird off school course there at the lighthouse. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they had the like barrel you crawl through it had stuff you like walk and balance on and had like little stones you step step across i mean it was really it was really random it was someone training for that show probably that uh uh what what's the show they do on tv where they the american that? ninja warrior where they yeah, just uh one. that could be you know maybe yeah. there's an icelandic version of uh the american ninja warrior and, and they uh, that's wood the kind wood. of stuff they do. Ours are ours is padded, and theirs was like wood, like that. Yeah, that's that's true too. It was it was wood. Um, and then we were able from there to get out to the next day. We woke up after after we stayed at Patrick's campground. Uh, we were able to make our way up to the ferry in that Steichen home. It's a long name. I would it. but yeah, it's a cool town. The cool it is. It is. It had the it had the little lighthouse um, overlooking, and you could see all the tiny little islands around it. Um, great the view harbor. of the Atlantic Ocean. Um, so that's always that's always a treat. <clears throat> it's yeah. uh it's the town. If you've ever seen the movie uh, Secret Life of Walter Mitty, uh, we stopped at the the bar. Uh, that he goes running out and jumps into the helicopter. Uh, saw exactly where it happened. And not a bar. No, it's it's just an abandoned building. And Mark, because he was confused because it's uh, it's advertised as a bar. It's advertised the Walter Mitty Bar on Google Maps. Yeah, I was expecting to uh, see it have people in there. But uh, or at least be closed, but have something in there. No, it's just literally an empty building. Yeah, that's wild. That's nuts. Uh, makes sense, I guess. Um, yeah, it no. was. And then got on the ferry. What you, what were your thoughts of the ferry? It was cool. I mean, I've been on quite a few ferries before. Um, I've even been on one of those car ferries that takes you across like the Green River in Kentucky in Mammoth Cave National Park. So it's like just the Kia Soul and two other cars getting carted across the river, um, which is, you know, you, you get those experiences. And uh, this one, I like the way the boat opened up and you parked um, and just the way they jammed everything and everybody in there. Um, yeah. But the top of the ferry was good. The food was good. The atmosphere was good. We were able to see some beautiful sights. Uh, definitely worth it. 10 out of 10. My favorite part of the ferry 
is us taking over all of basically someone's housing furniture from uh, the port to that little flatty island. Um, and we watched them load it up. It was hilarious. It was great. Yeah. Well, I hope they didn't pay for Amazon shipping that two day prime because uh, they're going to need a little refund because I'm sure it didn't show up in time. No, I'm not. And the fridge, too. That was crazy. They loaded the whole fridge up.